Hey, this is JT. Welcome to the backyard and welcome to body weight strength. This video is going to be quick. And what I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you three techniques to scale the intensity of the one arm push up. So if you've built a lot of upper body pressing strength, if you're already repping out one arm push ups uh, and they're getting too easy for you, instead of just doing them for volume um, with no end in sight, what you can do is one of the following three techniques. I alluded to the first one in the last video when I talked about moving your feet closer together as you progress. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Then I'm also going to demonstrate one arm push ups with feet on a chair and one arm push ups using the rings to give you an unstable surface. All three of these are going to be significantly harder than your standard wide based one arm push up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those three demonstrations and then I'm going to give you a few pointers at the end and uh, little tips on how to program, and then that's gonna wrap up this video. Short and sweet, let's get to it. Okay, so those three movements are pretty straightforward. A few things to keep in mind is, as you move the base of your triangle in, feet closer together, the force applied to the core um, becomes higher as you go. Same thing with the elevation of the feet, which puts your body at a decline, which is pressing at an incline. If you were at a gym, you'd be sitting on a bench and you'd be pressing up, right? But since we are doing body weight and this is a push up, you are in a decline, the body is in a decline um, from your feet being elevated on the chair to the ground, but you're pressing at an incline. So the reason that that's important is that pressing at an incline is what has been shown in studies to be the ideal way to build the serratus. So if you're trying to build the serratus anterior, um, what you wanna do is focus on that type of push up. They will get built with all the variations of push ups that you're doing but from a bodybuilding perspective, that's a way that you can focus on building an impressive serratus. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you're performing any of these one-arm push-ups without a wide base. So when you come to this video from the last video, it's time to start being cognizant of driving down through the ground with the ball of the opposite leg that you're pressing with. So what that means is if you're doing one-arm push-ups with the left hand pressing, then you want to take the right leg you wanna make sure that you tighten the glutes on both sides, tighten the hamstrings and the quads. You wanna have tension throughout the body. It's really, really important when you get to these advanced um, progressions. Tension throughout the body, but especially the leg opposite the pressing arm. So if you're pressing with the left hand, doing a one arm push up, then the right leg, you're going to drive the ball of the right foot down hard through the ground. So pressing hard through the ground with the opposite leg, of the pressing hand is gonna help you generate the most force and it's gonna help keep your core stable, your body stable, and you'll feel it as you start moving those legs together. When you're driving with one arm, you'll feel that 
counterbalancing with the body. It's the opposite leg of the pressing hand. That's really important. Make sure that you're focusing on that. Now, one thing I want to say before you give the suspended one arm push ups on the rings a shot, an isolateral movement on rings like that is a lot more difficult than the standard isolateral movement on the ground, meaning pressing with one hand on the ground on a stable surface is much easier than pressing with one hand on the unstable ring. So I don't suggest you try those ring one-arm push-ups unless you feel 100% that you are strong throughout the shoulder girdle, that your one-arm push-ups are very, very good, and that you're easily repping, you know, eight to 10 or more. And if you're doing that, and then you wanna give them a shot, you know, go ahead and do so. Just keep in mind that you want to train intelligently, you wanna train safely, and make sure that you have put time into developing strength throughout the shoulder girdle before you give those a shot. That being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Those are three variations of one-arm push-ups that you can do to scale intensity. And keep in mind from a programming standpoint that in order to stimulate hypertrophy, you do not need to do these variations. If you're already doing one-arm push-ups, you can continue to work one-arm push-ups and just add volume to those. You do not have to scale the intensity as long as you are still overloading over time. So as long as you're still adding reps over time, you will be stimulating hypertrophy. If you're no longer adding reps efficiently, then it might be time to look at one of these variations. Or if like me, you, you chase strength more than hypertrophy, that's kind of my thing, um, then you might wanna look at these variations as they're more advanced strength techniques and allow you to work in a lower rep range and fail at a lower rep range. So that's from a programming standpoint when you would want to put these into your programming. Um, that's all I've got for this video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new content. And as always, thank you for supporting Bodyweight Strength.